When I was a little girl, I was afraid of everybody and everything. Here's a picture of me. I'm the little girl on the far right. I was even afraid of the camera. But I wasn't afraid of her. She was tiny like me, and she was always happy to see me and my sisters. I remember her sitting in a chair reading her Bible and sharing her favorite candy with us. Elmer's Mint Bublets. They melted in your mouth. A really early version of Pop Rocks. While I was looking through family pictures one day, I found this shot. It's our four generations picture. That's me, the baby, and my sisters are sitting next to my dad, then my grandmother. Mesmerag is at the top of the steps. She is my great-grandmother. I was thrilled when I saw this one of her holding me and smiling. That's the exact smile I remember. I was intrigued by her, and even after she died, I would ask my mom to tell me stories about her. Mama said one day in the 1930s, when she and Daddy were dating, she wore a halter top. Mesmerag told her, I was pregnant 24 times, and my husband never saw that much of me. It took me years to realize how funny that was. When I was older, slowly but surely, the pieces of her life seemed to come into focus. And what a life. Mesmereg was born in 1866, a year after the Civil War. Imagine that. But she didn't live in the U.S. then. Most of her life, she lived in a small village in Turkey. It was called Ichme when she lived there. Today, it's called Ukari Ichme. It was a nice, prosperous village. And her husband, my great-grandfather, had a store, raised silkworms and grew almonds. They also raised three daughters. My grandmother is the one seated in the chair. She got married and moved to the United States. Aunt Eunice is the young one on the right, and Aunt Marcrid is standing in the middle. All was very good in Ichme. And then one day, just like that, it all changed. Life is like that to each of us at some time. Suddenly, often when you least expect it, there's a tear in the curtain of your reality, and life is never the same. On that day, and in that place, they came for my great-grandfather. Here is my Aunt Eunice talking about what happened next. It's the only time she ever talked about it. And they took my father away. They said, well, if he will love father, we bring him back. Yeah. But uh, they didn't. They, they killed him up there. They said he was praying when, uh, you know, they killed him. They killed him. Mm -hmm. So that's it. When they took my great-grandfather away, Mesmareg, Aunt Eunice, and Aunt Marcrid went into hiding. And when they came out, the world had shifted. It reminds me of what it would be like after a neutron bomb. The buildings were all there, but very few people were. And in this case, there was no earthquake or bomb. People did this. Almost everyone from the village and surrounding villages was dead or had been marched away through the desert with no food or water. No one knew where they had gone. They were all just gone forever. How can the human brain wrap around all of those things happening at once in such short a period of time? There were no easy answers to any of the questions. The biggest question became how to get food and survive. Mesmeraig went to work for bread but the girls had to go to an orphanage to be taken care of. My grandparents in the United States were frantic, but they never gave up. And finally, after several years, they found them through an Armenian newspaper. As soon as they could, they brought them to the United States. Tragedies that seismically disrupt life, whether natural or man-made, happen all over the world, all the time. What's amazing is that Mesmerag and hundreds of thousands of other survivors, in the face of all the tragedy, found a way to move forward, not forgetting the past, but not letting it destroy the future. I've thought a lot about what I would ask her if I had the chance. At first, I thought of asking her about that terrible time in her life, but in the end, 
After watching Aunt Una struggle, even after all those years, I decided I would just tell her how well everything and everybody turned out. And then, of course, share some Elmer's Mint Bublets and see if I could make her smile again. <laughs>